Welcome back. In this tutorial, I will focus on an asset-based risk assessment. In one of my earlier tutorials, I have explained that risk assessment can be broadly classified into a site outage risk assessment and an asset-based risk assessment. The site outage risk assessment talks of what are the possible threats that could cause a site outage. It could be both natural and man-made hazards. So what we had was a risk assessment based on the hazards that the site faces. In this tutorial, we will focus on a detailed asset level risk assessment. Every asset has an inherent vulnerability. For example, I have a laptop that I use at the airport before catching a flight. It makes me productive. It's an asset. But it has an inherent vulnerability that is, it could be an asset to someone else too. I have information stored on my laptop, which when processed gives me business intelligence, an asset. It could be an asset and hence a vulnerability for me if someone else were also to process that information. So every asset has an inherent vulnerability. There are various threats that exist. So a threat in case of a laptop could be that I misplace my laptop, in a hurry I leave it and go somewhere or I have to check in my laptop and the plane or the flight authorities lose my laptop or someone steals my laptop. So these are all the threats. A threat, when it exploits a vulnerability, results in a risk. But a risk in itself doesn't mean anything. A risk depends on two parameters. Firstly, what is the impact that would occur when an Threat exploits a vulnerability. And the second, what is the probability of a threat exploiting a vulnerability? So what we have is that every asset has an inherent vulnerability, which when exploited by a threat, results in a risk and risk depends on the impact and the probability of occurrence. It may be possible for us to reduce the risk by either reducing the impact or by reducing the probability of occurrence. For example, in case of a laptop, I could have controls in place that make it possible to reduce the impact or I could have other controls in place that limit the probability of a laptop being stolen. So what we have is controls. So for every possible risk we need to identify what are the controls that exist currently and whether they are adequate. So what we need to do is validate the controls for their existence and secondly for their effectiveness. And once we have this in place, 
what we get is an understanding of the risk profile of a particular asset. In many cases, it may not be possible to quantify risk in terms of impact and probability. But a qualitative assessment is possible. And what we typically do is create heat maps, wherein for a particular asset, based on its inherent vulnerability and a threat exploiting that, we can rate whether the impact is high, medium, low, and the probability of occurrence is high, medium, and low. For the controls, we can say whether they are high, medium, and low. And the net effect is the risk with the controls would give us the risk profile of that particular asset. Once we have created a heat map for all the assets in a particular organization for a particular department or for a particular class, we have a heat map of a risk based on the priority. So we can actually have a risk priority number being given to the assets based on the net risk times controls. Assets. Typically we divide the assets into the classes. So we have a class called hardware assets, software assets, people assets, brand assets and information assets. It's very difficult to have a clean line of demarcation. So it's possible that an employee stealing the data and selling it outside could also affect the brand. So there is a certain degree of overlap. However, what an asset-based risk assessment helps is in identifying at a broad level assets into various classes. And these classes are based on the fact that they have common threats because of their common vulnerabilities. So for example, for the people asset, the possible threats are that the employee could leave the organization and we have lost good talent. Obviously, this employee has been poached by some other organization, if we were to say that. It could be possible that an employee is fired by the organization and causes malicious intentional damage before leaving or it's possible that an employee leaves the organization for the organization carrying along with him secrets trade secrets or patents so we group the assets in classes based on the common commonalities having done that then we go through this entire methodology of identifying the threats that a particular class of assets is exposed to and then identifying the controls in place. It is a detailed exercise but the end result is that the organization has a heat map which helps to prioritize the assets based on their risk profile. And then the organization has alternatives whether they want to treat terminate, tolerate, or transfer the risk. And once they have done so, a recalculation of the heat map for the risk profile of an asset is done. And what we have is the residual risk, which is the risk appetite of the organization. I thank you for listening to this video. Please be back.